Michigan. Fans, welcome to the cheap seats on you 96. You rushing everything. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do, right? When the music goes out, great again. when the music albums. goes out, you come in. Rush 2112. Yeah. Well, uh, hey, you play the drums on that? No. Okay. I mean, no. Yeah, uh, he's pretty good. Wanted. Hey, welcome to the cheap seats 96.3 FM. We are streaming live on the web at WLCNSports.com. We're on Twitter at WLCN Sports and Facebook. Mm-hmm. Or download the what app, Joe? Oh, that's mm. a snapper app. <laughs> yeah, close. Next, <laughs> let's just have people search out there for the snapper, snapper app. I'm looking for that snapper app. <laughs> Joe, Tuttle Mixler app. Uh, download on your phone. You got it on the new iPhone X, there, Jake. Uh, I do. You got a new right. phone, Jake? He did. I He's do. proud of it. Well, look at I you. I was proud of it. Oh, I didn't well, you even <laughs> comment on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he's right. You know what? You're pretty proud of your phone. You, if you don't proud. have a case on it. Oh. That's the case you, coming today. You right? know you're not going to break it when you <laughs> no, don't have a case on this it. This is the slipperiest phone. The I've eyes of that thing had. fall on are slim to none. <laughs> I've, I've got two <laughs> hands holding on tight. Can very, I see it? Very yeah. slippery. <laughs> hey guys, we're at a, 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 a new place today. Uh, we are at the Blue Dog. Uh, the Blue Dog. Here. Yeah, and uh, first time up here doing a show. Yep. Uh, I like to thank John Blackburn for having us. Uh, Denny Sharp. Oh yeah, hanging around there in the back. Yeah. So. Uh, very nice place up here. Great food. Oh, the, I love the Blue Dog. Great lunches, and I, this, they've expanded over here on this other side. I don't know how. I'm horrible at time. I'm sure that Mr. He Blackburn can tell us. I was going to say, it's been four or five years. Wow, yeah. longer than that. But, uh, yeah, it kind of opened it up. TV sports on. Yeah. Get yourself some draft beers. TV sports. Cold mugs. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the chuckles. A box of chuckles. I feel like I'm at the movie that theater. Pretty good. I love it when it's not pointed towards me. Because <laughs> that was a TV, comma, sports. Oh. Always sports on up here. You know what I mean? Uh, they do uh, now. They're, they're way. Yeah. <laughs> Liberace, Versace, same thing. How was that documentary? The Liberace documentary? <laughs> That's it was interesting. It's Versace. Oh, you said Liberace. I did say Liberace. <laughs> you know, okay. I'm 40 now. I confuse things easily. Uh, that's a good show. Yeah. You probably have some of that his his clothing line, don't you, at home? I know you do. Probably Spot. not. I do. You got some of those fancy though. little beads on the back of your <laughs> jean pockets, don't you? <laughs> you all shiny when you walk away? <laughs> Don't look at me like. Meanwhile, meanwhile, <laughs> back in the sports world, uh, opening season, guys. Baseball opening day was opening Thursday. Season. Season. <laughs> opening <laughs> season. Is it duck season? <laughs> oh, hey, that's right back at you. Pal. Right back at me. I don't know why. It's you got to open the season, opening day of the season. I mean, I just combined them. <laughs> you get crabs in the back of the aquarium, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's out there. <laughs> <laughs> this was that jam yeah, with yeah. the duck call? <laughs> you know, if this is a show at night, they think we were all drunk. It is yeah. hard on <laughs> a at show. night. They go, oh, yeah, well, listen to those guys. Hi, everybody. Now they just think we're idiots. <laughs> well, man. It doesn't matter what yeah. they think of. Yeah. Oh, at the Blue Dog where the blue moons go down smooth. <laughs> the Blue Dog. You know, I walked in today, I thought I'd smell bacon and eggs going, but. No, I didn't. No, I did got, smell donuts, though. Got some donuts. So I got to throw a big thank you out to JB for donuts. Here? No, but I thought they could have today. They got they have a grill and stuff back there. <laughs> they probably have bacon. Yeah. We could have made some bacon. I mean, That's all right, though. It's a plate full of if bacon. If John walks in the door and get, says, I want some bacon and eggs, guess what's going to get made? Bacon That's and exactly right. <laughs> you know? It all well, comes from the top. And a blue moon. Yeah. That's, it's Bacon it's like this show. It all comes from the top. Yep. Okay, let's get back. Opening <laughs> opening day. Opening day, guys. Opening was day, Thursday. Is that better? You like that better, Lloyd? Yep. Opening day of the 2018 season. Is a lot that of teams MLB. Yeah, is, that, is that all right? I'm good with it. Okay, good. Uh, Cubbies, they, they win their first game. Cardinals, they lose. And then the Cubbies last night, 17 innings. They ah. lose in the bottom of the 17th inning. Wow. That's a game you just you don't you care what, if you win if, or lose. If, if you're a Marlins fan or a Cub fan at that game, at some point you gotta be like, yeah, I, I'm just done. <laughs> well, they <laughs> you know? stop. They stop serving drinks at seventh Eighth inning. inning. Yeah, <laughs> I no, mean, but there's a lot of people. You're going left. another nine, ten innings, and yeah, no beer. Yeah. 
You can't keep them in the stands. Yeah. But you can't let them keep drinking. <laughs> <It'll be a> <laughs> <mess>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you knew it was going to know that games, you're good. But yeah. uh. there had been a lot of uh, intoxication going yeah, on. Yeah, th- th- I didn't see any of it. But were there a lot of fans left at the end or no? no I doubt it. I oh, didn't. No, no, no. There's not a whole lot of fans in the first place. But uh, yeah. it's Miami. Yeah, there's a lot to do, including a, a warm beach. Yeah, yeah wouldn't place. it be so, awfully nice? How come we don't live in Miami? Well, because we live in yeah, Illinois. So live, yeah, yeah. We don't have that. No, I'd like to live in Miami, though. You would? Yep. Go down and run a nightclub. Yeah. Well, hey, guys, on the phone line with us now, we have uh, Loyola, Loyola University assistant coach Matt Gordon with us. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, fellas. How are we doing? We're doing good. good. Uh, thanks for taking some time to talk to us today. I know you have a busy day today uh, because there's a big yeah. game tonight that you're partaking in. Uh, congratulations that's, that's with what that. I, that's, what I, that's what I heard as well. <laughs> hey, hey, Matt, i got to be honest with you. Uh, I I never knew your first name until now. I've always known you by Flash, so I apologize. Hey, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. What, what, I, what I always tell everybody, whatever you call me, my parents have called me worse, so don't worry about it. <laughs> well, you know, I've known you for, I don't know, 15 years or so, and I never knew your first name was Matt. and It's, it's always been Flash <laughs> to me. So. Well, you're not the only one. That's oh. all right. Well, hey, congratulations, man. Uh, this has got to be pretty exciting times up there in Chicago. You're a Chicago guy yourself. Uh, went to Santa Rita back in 2001. Uh, so now it's a little bit of home cooking for you. Oh, man, it's awesome. Uh, it, even uh, I was, I've been there. Uh, I came with Porter uh, seven years ago uh, when he got the job. And my uh, my family's all uh, on the south side right there. And they come to every single game, you know, for the last seven years. And, you know, my, my dad was always telling me, hey, we got to find a way to get some more wins. And I, hopefully he's uh, he's a little happier now. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, we pulled him on the road here for the last three week uh, three weekends. With, uh, but it's been a crazy run. Chicago is just on fire. Um, everybody there is just uh, so excited about what's going on. They, It's a team, really, that they can get behind. It's a, it's a pretty blue-collar team that, you know, likes to work and play hard and play the right way. So, the city is uh, the city's loving this group. I can just imagine, you know, you know, being an Illinois school, and it's not Loyola University that everybody expects to be in a Final Four. It's your University of Illinois, or you know, teams like that. Do you think the Missouri Valley maybe gets a little bad rap, and maybe this opens up the committee's eyes where maybe a mid-major deserves two teams? Because, in all honesty, Matt, if you don't win the uh, Missouri Valley tournament. You're not even in the NCAA tournament, and uh, you think that the committee might look upon that as uh, maybe some of these mid majors deserve two teams in there. I certainly hope so. Um, it's uh, obviously it's it you know being around and you guys are, are right there in the heart of Valley Country, um, and you know you guys have have a have a good feel for how good this league is, and it's been good for a long time. Um, the the scouting and the coaching in this league is is unbelievable like it's funny when you get to the ncaa tournament we were able to open up you know parts of our playbook that we couldn't run in the conference season because everybody takes your stuff away right uh you play against some of these teams and i don't i really don't think some of the other leagues you know i think they rely on a lot of a lot of really good players and a lot of athleticism um but they don't take away every single little thing that you do well like you like it happens in the valley um it's just a really well coached a really well scouted league um, and uh, it absolutely deserves more than one team because you know if you get if you get a couple of these teams in, um, they're with the way that these teams scout prepare. You know you're gonna you're gonna see you know more of these bigger programs getting picked off. Right, and then, you know you guys have done it. You've picked off some big programs, a Tennessee program, a solid uh, a team there, and then a Nevada, very athletic, very skilled team. You guys knock them off. Uh, I know you got your game plan, and obviously for Michigan, uh, you know, they're uh, athletic, a long team. Uh, how do you guys match up with them? I know you got to be the underdog, you know, just because you're 11 seed, but uh, I thought you matched well up with Nevada, and Michigan's got to be a, a similar team. Yeah, they. Uh, it's it's a little bit of a tricky matchup. No, Nevada was a was a tricky matchup because they were basically playing five guards, um, which kind of yeah. it. What's really good about our team is that we're pretty versatile. Um, we can play a lot of different styles in a lot of different ways, and it kind of comes down to our, our big men. Um, the freshman, Cam Crutwig, um, is, he was freshman of the year in the Valley. Um, he's a really good piece of what we do, especially offensively, and he's one of our best communicators defensively. 
he was kind of neutralized a little bit in the Nevada game because they were basically playing five guards. We were able to neutralize that a little bit um, by playing Andre Jackson, uh, who's, a, who's a fourth year. He's a junior college transfer. He was sixth man of the year last year. He's a little smaller, quicker, and he was able to switch some different things. So that's what able was able to help us in the Nevada game. This game is a, is a little trickier in that the, the big hit Wagner um, from Michigan is uh, you know a guy that can stretch the floor. Not you know not necessarily a great matchup for Crutwig um, in that respect, but Drake can maybe ch- tra- chase him around a little bit um, on the perimeter but he's not he doesn't have the you know the size because you know Wagner 6 nine so it's definitely a tricky matchup and that they can really spread and space you um, especially with coach beeline who's a who's a genius of a coach and does a does a really good job especially offensively so it's uh, it definitely presents uh, some different challenges um, but uh, but we got you know we got a tough group that's been through a lot of big games, uh, a lot of important games, and they won't be uh, they won't be shell shocked by the moment. No, and and you look through this tournament, and uh, you're always going to find that one coach that you don't like. You know that you're rooting against. <laughs> <laughs> All four coaches are, are are really good guys. You know you got Bill Self, <laughs> Jim Wright. Uh, Coach Beeline and then Porter, you know, I mean, they're they're all good guys, and you want to see them, ex- you know, advance and succeed. And obviously, only one team can go. But uh, you know, Matt, you're in the Final Four. Is that sunk in yet? Not uh, not quite. <laughs> even you, even you saying that, I was I walked into the arena um, when we first got here. On the, well, we got here Wednesday, and we we walked into the arena for the first time on Thursday, and I. I took a an, in, an Instagram video of just walking into the place, and it was like completely surreal. <laughs> um, you know, I've been to, to the Final Four as a as just a fan, and right. went to the practices on Friday, and you know, we're, I'm walking out there, and we're we're going into our practice, and I mean, it's there's you know, ten to fifteen thousand people there watching practice. It was uh, it was an amazing uh, thing, but it's it's a it's a really cool thing for the for the university, really awesome for the city. Um, it's uh, and it's, it's great for the valley too, getting uh, getting a lot of good exposure, and you know it's a uh, it's a really fun time. Well, speaking of exposure, you're talking with the cheap seats, and then at the same time, ESPN's talking about you. So you know it's uh, <laughs> you get plenty of exposure. <laughs> you're getting some exposure. I don't know from us, but uh, definitely from ESPN. And that is that something you've had to really kind of deal with uh, all the media and the attention. And how how do you keep your kids focused? The, me- the media has been another level. It's, it's really it coaches uh, that um, we talked to before. Coach Moser talked to quite a few coaches that have been here. He talked to Frank Martin um, and people that have been here recently, and they uh, they said there's nothing that can prepare you for the media blitz that's coming. Um, and when they're around. Thursday was just Thursday was I think it was like three to four straight hours of media. Like they were in the locker room, they interviewed everybody. I mean, they were interviewing myself, which was kind of ridiculous. They were interviewing uh, they were interviewing our walk-ons. Like everybody was getting you know some type of interview. Then they're pulling them back in like this green screen room, and a lot of the graphics and stuff that you'll see tonight. I got to watch that. It was like it's like a movie production that they do. Yeah. Um, it, it's something you can't even can't even describe unless you see it. But you'll you'll see a lot of it on the telecast tonight of the different stuff they were doing. So, um, you know what's what's good about all this, and probably the reason that we're in this spot is that we have a very veteran group. We have, um, I think, five guys that are in their fourth year of college. Um, so they've been on they've been not, they've ever been anything this this big, but they have been in big games. It's not uh, even our freshmen um, that are playing a lot of minutes. Cam Crutwig and Lucas Williamson are very mature freshmen. Um, they've played in big games as well, but this is this is the stage isn't too big for them. They're not too uh, they're not too starstruck or caught in the limelight. So it's a it's pretty focused here. Would they know that you know once it gets down to you know enjoy all that, enjoy the the media coverage and everything else. But when we get down to you know meetings and film sessions and you know walkthroughs practice they're locked in they're they're ready to they're ready to work and they know what the game plan is hey coach the i see the michigan they they can shoot the three i mean i think they have five guys that can are just a little less than 40 percent shooting the three i mean is it how important is that tonight to stop those guys get out on yeah them? we were just talking about it yeah they can they can really shoot it they got a lot of guys that can uh spread and space you that's uh in in some ways similar to us um and that they can really spread and space you it's a it's a key because 
um, you know, especially like the, the Duncan Robinson kid at the, at the four position can, can really stretch it from from you know and when they're when they have that many guys that can shoot it around a big like Wagner um, that, that's pretty versatile. Um, it's a uh, it presents a, a challenge. So we're gonna have to try to guard the three point line and at the same time try to keep them out of out of the paint, which is uh, which is a key because they got some guys that can really drive the ball too. Might need to uh, sneak six on the court tonight, then, if you can. Leave a guy down in the paint and then get some guys out on the threes. That's just some coaching, I'd love, I'd, some coaching I'd love stuff we picked up here at the table. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you what. If I, I might need a coach call Coach Alexander. He's, he's always got some good tricks <laughs> up his sleeve on how to, how to defend people, so well, I might, uh, might utilize him. I think, I think you guys are doing just fine. I think Greg's down there, isn't he? Him and Trock? Oh, they, they run oh, around yeah, there somewhere? They're down here. Um, <laughs> I talked to. They stayed in Austin last night. Yeah. Haven't lived there, so they're uh, they're down there and they're making their way to San Antonio here sometime this morning. Um, so I'm sure I'll be getting a getting a phone call or a text. Um, but I think they uh, they know I'm a little busy today, so we'll, we'll see them after. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we're gonna let you go uh, because just because of that, you are busy, and we appreciate you taking some time to talking to us. Uh, I know the media's been crazy, and you know take us some time to talk to us bozos uh we do appreciate it yeah thank you very much oh uh, no, anytime i love uh love coming down to lincoln and seeing greg and seeing everybody down there so well, hey uh, we'll be able to do that this summer yeah next time you're down let us know we'll get you on live here and uh you are a chicago guy cubs or Sox? well i'm a, I'm a south side cubs fan actually Atta boy. So, yep. uh, i knew that i just so wanted I, to hear it we're not going to hold that against know, you it's all right I sounds know, like a band i know you're happy me. i know I know, I know. You guys are stuck right in the middle of the the enemy lines. They're yeah. getting forward between red and blue, but uh, but uh, definitely uh, looking forward to getting to some get to to Wrigley a bunch this summer. Well, I tell you what, I, I can see you in the booth doing a seventh inning stretch. You know, you guys are you big time now. So I know Porter did it uh, a while back. So I think it's your time now. To get up there and sing. I I would I would love to do it, even though I'd probably be scared out of my mind. <laughs> um, I'd love. I'd, I'd love I'd love to do it, but I do think uh, one of our actually our the Cubs owners uh, Todd Ricketts is actually a Loyola grad, so he's been Ooh. flying private planes all wow. over the country. There you to, go, uh, Flash man, you're in it now. He, he's been coming to see us all over the country in the in the tournament here, so uh, I have a feeling he's, they're going to invite the team uh, up to Wrigley at some point, which would be a, a pretty cool experience for them. Oh, absolutely! All right, uh, Matt, uh, thanks for taking some time. Good luck tonight, and uh, we look forward to seeing a victory. No problem, fellas. Go Railers. We'll yeah. You soon. <laughs> All right, Thanks, buddy. Coach. Good luck. That's Matt Gordon, assistant coach at the Final Four. That's fun. for Loyola University. How cool is that? That that, that would awesome. be very cool. You know, he if says he wins. If they win this game, I feel like it's because he came on the air this morning. Well, I feel that they've done it without us before. If they lose <laughs> the game, <laughs> well, you know, one of the like lose, we jinxed. If them. they lose it, it's just like ESPN <laughs> the magazine. <laughs> You know, one of the questions I was wanting to ask him, but, uh, you know, it's just kind of one of those, you, you put it in your pocket. Are you gonna, Where are you going to be next year? <laughs> I can't ask him that well, now. Oh, yeah, I was going to say. You know, because he's he known now. Well, they're, you know, when you, All when you start is. winning some games and you're in a Final Four, <laughs> yeah. these other schools are going to come calm. That's, That's just a big the way deal, it is. Man. You know, he's, they're going to get paid. He's getting a raise. Oh, Porter's yeah. getting a raise. If it's a Loyola. If Porter's there next year. Right, I'm saying if it's at a Loyola or somewhere else. There's going to be a uh, substantial financial oh, yeah. increase. That just rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> say, you know, you said that with ease. Let's roll back through that. I, hey, hey, I, I, I said so, Cue that up, Lloyd. I said something right. <laughs> that was substantially sound. Yeah, Good job. I tell you what. I tell you what. Well, well deserved, man. What, yeah. what a great run this year. So much. I mean, I know they're an Illinois team, and what, but that's fun. Yeah. When and, you get an, uh, a team that you consider a classic underdog, and they just march on. Through. And the way they do it, they play as a team. They yep. move the ball. There's no selfish play. They play solid defense. Well, a lot of teams are down on them because of how Michigan's defense is, how, how suffocating it is, and big. Well, yeah. Uh, Loyola, it, they can take you out of your game. I was going to say, the, the thing that he brought up at the beginning, and I, I, I thought was very fitting for that, was we haven't really ran our offense because we can't run it exactly. in Missouri Valley. There's yeah. So there's going to be. I think some, that's going to be kind of interesting. And how big is it to be that the the Mo Val against the the Big Ten? Big you know, Ten. Yeah, that's yeah. a big show. You know, that's another we talked about. Does this 
kind of opened up the committee's eyes as well, far as the last few years. Because you, know? you look at, I mean, we <clears throat> didn't even get into detail. You had Wichita State, Creighton, Creighton two Creighton. solid schools that they moved to other conferences, but you know their top twenty-five teams, your, t- your schools, you know, yep. that have you know been in the tournament year in year out. Where the Valley, I think they're kind of the you know they're a mid-major school, but. Why aren't a lot of these mid majors getting two teams well, in? Especially the if Valley. Yeah. The Valley's been tough for years it's, now. It's man. very competitive. Very, school. I mean, very you look tough. and you got you got Bradley. They're coming back. SIU solid. Illinois State's been solid, and you know Illinois State's another one of those teams that if they're in the tournament, they can win a couple games. So yeah. I, I think the you know I don't know the answer. I mean, we're just a well little you know, but the committee ha- that has to open up their eyes where. A lot of these schools, they deserve more well, than one team. Well, I mean, you have to win your – no matter if you win the conference and you go you into your tournament, conference yeah. tournament, yes. if you lose that matter. conference tournament, you're done. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, 25-0 and 0 in the regular season. or I, you know, I tell you whatnot. what it's about, those guys. It's all about getting the dollars in. And as the Missouri well, Valley keeps getting more popular, and it's, it's growing quickly. Y- your yeah. ratings, you're going to have better ratings because people want to see that Loyola team. They want to see that upset. Oh, they want loves see, Loyola. They want to see that underdog beat the, you know, the David and Goliath. Sure. They, they want to see that. It's got to help the ratings. And it's got to, when they look back on the numbers and, you know, how they did things, they've, they've got to look at Loyola and be like, well, the Missouri Valley. That, that's a that's one of the you know that's so. a good it's a good conference and it's competitive and you know hopefully you know they see that and maybe get two teams in next year who knows but I don't know the answer but I just I think it's been like that for years because it's been solid Northern Iowa is solid you know oh, yeah. it's a great conference and you know Flash told you right there you know nobody He's works harder so they do it all they do it all and you know like we said. You look at this tournament, you, you want to find that coach to hate. All, f- all four coaches are phenomenal, you know. We don't really like to hate anyone on this I show. I don't know. You, I, I'll, you're I'll a hate hater. Self. You don't like self? I don't mind. Yeah. You just want to go against the grain. I didn't like the fact that he left Illinois the way he did. Well, I don't either, but you know, he did Everyone the right Everyone going to do it, though. I don't yeah. know if he did. No, he didn't. Not for me. <laughs> well, yeah, not for you. But, uh, hey. It's all hey. about you, isn't yeah. it, Jay? Hey. All right, let's. Uh, let's I'm, I'm a selfish. Speaking Illinois of a hardworking fan, guy, we got one that's going to come on here pretty soon, don't we? Yes, we do. Uh, let's take commercial break. Maybe we come back. Maybe we can get Bill Self on the phone. Yeah, I don't know. We just got we got Flash on, so we'll see. Look at that. Well, I'm doubting. Well, I'm doubting it, but Jim's on it. There you go. It, well, he's not the best song. producer around for a reason. He well, is. Say what? Just, man, you know, he's a schnizzle. He's right in those rankings with us on the Saturday morning show. <laughs> His name's mentioned. Do you know the words to this? Uh, go, go fight, win. Go fight, ramblers. Boom, boom. Hey. All right, let's take a commercial break. Come back. We're going to talk. I don't know. We'll talk some more Final Four, so stay tuned. You're the Cheap Seats on 96.3 FM. There. Who's that? I don't know. Who's this? Uh, Jim don't line. even know. Uh, he's got to figure out who he's bringing us into. You know what I mean? We don't even have any uh, comments. JB, you know who that is? Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do I? That sounds familiar. O-A-R. Oh, O-A-R. Oh, well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hey, welcome back to the Cheap Seats. <laughs> you don't even know who it is, and he's playing. We don't know who, who it is. Who the heck is that? Uh, welcome back to the Cheap Seats. We are at the Blue Dog Inn, and when you're at the Blue Dog Let's Inn, talk Blue Dog. that means the man himself, John Blackburn. Good morning, John. Good morning. Thank you. Thanks for having us today. Uh, and, you know, this is a great place up here. Uh, here a little late last night and yeah. here early, uh, so that means business is good. Business was great. We had a phenomenal Friday and Friday night. And our staff, as usual, did a just a bang up job. You know, knocked it out of the park. And we're fortunate here. Our head cook's been here 27 years, so she kind of knows where things are. And yeah. Our <laughs> head waitress and bar uh, manager Susie Taylor's oh, been here 20 years. So if we stay out of the way, a lot of good things yeah. happen. Dang, it just you just got to get out of the way. Yeah. You just sit back in the corner and. Yeah. How long have you owned the Blue work? Dog? How long have you guys owned the Blue Dog? Uh, be nine years tomorrow. Wow, really? Yeah. Oh, anniversary then. Oh, yeah. 
Do you have any specials? You're closed on Sundays. Yeah, it's a Sabbath, <laughs> Joe. You probably don't know much about that. But <laughs> There's no Easter special going on over here? <laughs> yeah, not so here. Come on up, Joe. They'll hook you right up. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was going to walk in here today and smell bacon, and I smell donuts. I mean, I got a pretty good nose on it. I was going to say. I found the donuts. I see you did. There's yeah. about, uh, there was 15 of them whoa, to start whoa, with, whoa, and whoa. like two left. <laughs> Check some belt sizes around here. I wasn't the only one eating a donut. <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. You're, uh, but I, I got to say this about the place. It, you know what? The place is always clean. It's always friendly, and the food is good. I mean, that's three things you're looking for in a restaurant. Absolutely. Yeah, our goal has always been to have a, a quality food, a good service, at a very reasonable price. And, you know, it's an interesting place. You come in here uh, last night, and there was a doctor in one of the booths and uh, a farmer sitting next to him and somebody that uh, works on uh, climbing poles was just down the way and and it's just it's a melting pot of Lincoln and we're we like that because uh, I think it says that it's comfortable and, Oh, everybody loves the place. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, food is phenomenal. The, the variety of food is amazing as yeah. what you have. It's yeah, the menu is actually uh, the cooks would tell you too large but uh, every time we try to take something off of it, somebody says, well, what happened to, you know, whatever oh, yeah. it was? And so we, we <coughs> just kept it. It's, we really didn't uh, change it much when we bought it other than expand into the room where we're sitting today. And uh, I think, you know, added about 45 seats and expanded our kitchen so that we could handle a bigger crowd because it got to where we, we couldn't manage the crowds uh, with just the one side. It's a good problem. It, yeah. It, yeah. that was. Speaking of menu, you know, every restaurant uh, eating establishment has their, their uh, signature dish. What, what's the blue dye? I know what I like up here, and that's the Reuben. What's, what's the signature dish up here? Well, uh, we probably sell, if I was saying the most, uh, would be horseshoes and pony shoes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But truthfully, there's, there's not one dish that, that just stands out over the rest. A lot of people like our steak and shake burgers. And, and uh, it, I really can't tell you, other than I know we sell, when we look at uh, our, our menu, or excuse me, our POS system, <coughs> at the end of the year, the most sales are, are the oh, either the horseshoe, horseshoe or pony shoe. Huh. And you know, it's difficult for a restaurant to have a lot of things that are good. You know what I mean? Like yeah. It seems like uh, restaurants need to find those eight things they do well and do them, and you guys have continued to have yeah, way I th I more Yeah, I think that. that's why we, we do have a daily special. And people that are frequent uh, attendees here at the Blue Dog know what we're having as a special that day, and if it's something they like. Uh, we can pretty well tell you a, a lot of the people that will show up whether, if we're having country fried steak or if we're having meatloaf and we'll say well so and so will be here today so yeah it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's really been fun to to have the restaurant and we're uh, really appreciative of, of our staff and our customers and we've I, got and a I, lot of loyal customers I, yes you do and I've complained some about the, the sloppy joe thing you mean you don't they can you can throw a lot of names in there yeah, and I didn't know if you were picking on your son Joey or no, picking on you, me. But I've kind of taken it a little personal with. Well, um, and and maybe you should. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John, hey, I, we I, we have we have real quick. Uh, we've got a, a texter uh, says that to the best of his knowledge, John Blackburn is the only coach in IHSA history to take teams in two different classes to state finals. Class A and double A. And back then, there was only two classes. Yeah, that's, that's not actually accurate. But, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good story. And well, maybe yeah, I thanks, should. Joey, no. for thanks, Joey, for sending it over here. Uh, <laughs> no. Joel, you're wrong. <laughs> well, actually, uh, I coached in, in two schools, Mor Morrisonville and Payne, and we did go to the state tournament in both schools, but they were both Class A. And uh, we had, you know, small towns you can imagine as as it is here in lincoln when teams go to state it was everybody was there it'd been a good day to rob anything you wanted uh yeah. morrisonville i remember we sold 1500 tickets in, in a town of a thousand you know that was pretty impressive but uh That's fun. It, it was great times and and a lot of terrific players you know just midwest farm kids who love basketball and, and so did the community so we had a had a great time but you know it's a hundred years ago before it was just after peach baskets and just before three-point shots well and you you still hang with a lot of those kids that played for you don't you they come around and golf with you and stuff Tell you know you they that bond? every year uh and i don't organize it but the players uh one of them john fall who was a 
uh, played on our state tournament team in Morrisville and then was a 40-year official and, and actually it's one of the few people that has officiated and played in, this, in the state tournament. Uh, he organizes it and usually we'll have four, five, six, sometimes eight foursomes and they come from all over the country. They come from uh, Boise, Atlanta, uh, Detroit, uh, players that... Uh, we had a lot of really neat kids there, particularly at Morrisonville. They they seem to have hung together even more than uh, Pena kids, and it's uh, it's quite an honor. And and we always tell stories, and they're quite a bit better today than they actually were when they played. <laughs> <laughs> and you were probably a better coach, made all the right calls. Well, and... I we had a six five kid that when I went there uh, was a freshman, and and he grew an inch every year, and every time he grew an inch, I got smarter. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how that works. Yeah. And, you, hey, and, and so, I mean, we're talking Final Four today, obviously, and had the coach on from Loyola. But you're, I mean, it's so cool to go to the state oh. high school basketball tournament. That Final Four tournament must be uh, unbelievable. I've really really several of those, too. But. Yeah, I have, and it's, it's an exciting thing. Maybe the most exciting sporting event I've attended is, is the Final Four. And it seems like the Saturday's even more exciting than, than than Monday because teams are fighting hard to be in that championship game and I was at St. Louis when Illinois uh, was there in, in 2005 and I'll tell you what what people were paying for tickets was almost uh, nasty <laughs> no, yeah I, I mean they were really wanting in you know it was so close to uh, to Illinois and it was uh, it's a great event I hope Porter Mosier uh, his kids play as as well as they've played in, in the past. I knew Porter pretty well when he was at ISU because I was at Country and we were sponsoring a lot of different things at, at ISU. And he's he's a gentleman. He's a quality person and uh, very deserving of, of what's happening. Yeah, he was pretty raw back then. He was. He, he's had a lot of life changes since then. You know, he was down with Rick Majerus in right. St. Louis. So he got the experience, you know, that and you know he, Rick Majerus, one of the best high school college basketball coaches ever, and yeah. you know just learning from that. And then he goes to Loyola, what seven years ago? That's about right. But, and yeah, and, and he just credit, takes that he, with him. And he does give a lot of credit to Coach Majerus yeah. for his sort of maturity and mm -hmm. and becoming a, an outstanding coach. I liked the way his kids played at ISU, but he yeah. they played hard. Uh, I'm just you know it's it's difficult to put together a team. <coughs> at those mid-majors that can compete and he's he's certainly done it probably there are other mid-majors out there that are better than and should be in the tournament but don't make it you know if they got upset at st louis he's not in the tournament right and he's playing in the final yeah, four that was one of our uh discussions with uh with matt if if they don't win that tournament no they're not in. they're not even in so no. does that does this kind of open up the committee's eyes where maybe some of these mid-majors do deserve I mean, I know they look at RPIs, right. uh, strength of schedule, and all that other stuff's a factor. This has got to open their eyes a little bit, doesn't it? I think the frustration to the mid-majors is they can't get a schedule with with enough quality teams outside of their conference. And it, it, when you look at it from the big schools, mm -hmm. how many of those mid-majors do you want to play? Because you really have nothing to gain yeah, by right. playing them. If you beat them, you're supposed to. Right. If, if you get you beat by them, it's, it's a... It's kind Could of hurt a you well, it, for yeah. these mid majors. It's a money maker, you know. It, if you have a Loyola going playing a Duke, they're getting millions of dollars right. to go play that game, and that helps their program. Absolutely. Whereas, you know, I, I don't know the answer, but I just think that they've got to look into it a little bit more. Where you know maybe an ISU makes it in this year because you know that, they, that's happened a couple times in in the valley, but I don't think you can get beat twenty. No, and and get in. <laughs> right. that, that was that game really hurt their chances if there were any. Well, what I'm saying is, if Illinois State beats, oh, if if they beat Loyola, obviously Illinois State's in. But Loyola, Loyola's probably out. not. And yeah. they win the conference and they go 25 and you know whatever, uh, you know. That that's a difficult thing. And then you look at the other side of it, and I would say Penn State would have beaten a lot of the teams Absolutely. in the tournament. Yeah. Uh, they, then, yes, they won the NIT, and maybe winning five games with a young team that's only got a senior or two on it is is okay, right? Because you're getting prepared for. Yeah. Well, for it, it's season. tough, you know, because you have a Notre Dame team that didn't make it, Oklahoma State, and they're looking at those teams on the bubble. Well, you're not going to add another <coughs> mid-major school and to knock another 
you know, yeah. major school, you know, off that bubble. So I, I don't think there is any – I don't know if there is an answer. It's just the way it is. Well, Unless you expand it, you know, expand it from 68 to – Whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then you're, 200 at some point. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, Everybody's in. You know, you know there, there has to be a lot to be said, too, for – the, these mid majors being able to get kids that are going to be there for four years that are quality athletes and mature and, and and mature you know not only physically but mentally they get to the place that some of these mid major schools can beat some of these right. you know Big Ten schools ACC two teams because they have so many young kids that maybe aren't mentally ask in the Virginia same spot. how what they think of those yeah, mid majors exactly yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah well you know what I'm always a fan of the team in like Loyola that that has the kids that have been around a while right. but you know I mean the one and dones I just I mean, I I understand what they're doing, and I understand that. I mean, I throw Kentucky out there because they seem to do it a lot. But sure, and I understand they want to win championships, and so do all the fans. But it's just not the same as that kid that's if you watched him for three or four years. They came and a name in your household. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you can't you can't relate to these kids. You can't get to know them. You know, it's not real personal because right. they are there one or two years and gone. Whereas, like a Loyola team, I know oh, they, like they've the, had like some the transfers in. Back, you yeah, know, they, you know, they're back. there three or four years. Oh. Uh, Loyola, they had some transfers come in, but these are kids that you can relate to. They're, you know, I, I wish guess. they'd do something about that. I, I think they will. There's, there's so much discussion. The difficulty is, what's the right thing to do? You know, do you say it's you can go straight to the NBA? It used to happen every once yeah, in a sure. while. You know, Kobe and Moses Malone, LeBron, some of those guys, LeBron. I mean, the mailman. But, but well, they're ahead. such a rare breed. I mean, there's not many kids coming out oh, of high school that are ready to play in the Big the Ten, let alone the NBA. And, yeah, it's, it's a – Well, it's, I kind of I think that a, a few years after those guys that we just mentioned – you had the the Curry kid from Chicago, and the other kid go to the Bulls uh, right out of high school, and they were clearly not ready. Yeah, I mean, it, it took them years, and, and for the Curry kid, he never really caught on to where right. he was where he should have been. You well, know? here's the thing, you know, our, these kids are going to college for one year. They're not going for school. They're not going for academics. Going are they even going to classes? They know they're going to college for one year, and they're going to the NBA. And I, you know, so, Coach Cal will tell you that that they're very strict about going to class but uh if you look at the graduation rate i'm not sure that's valid <laughs> yeah. and, and you can't blame a kid all right i'm uh i'm just finishing my freshman year and somebody i'm a lottery pick and i'm gonna get, gonna get millions. several million yeah. dollars i've got a family that's really excited about that opportunity and i i don't blame the players Absolutely at all for, for nope. taking that uh you know myers leonard when he left illinois Really could have used one more year right. at Illinois and would have made a big difference in that team. Yep. But you never know. He had a six-year-old brother and a and a mom who was uh, somewhat disabled, and dad wasn't around. Yeah. And so, here's there was the opportunity. And you know you never know you could tear an ACL. Absolutely. You're done. You yeah. know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. these days you can recover, but that's two or three years down the road. You can never may not be the same player. So yeah. if you got somebody dangling millions of dollars in your face well you go to school to get get a job yeah. i'd say those are pretty Here's good your job. jobs <laughs> yeah. so, solid for a few years at least yeah we gotta, <laughs> and it pays well all right we got a go. caller go ahead caller yeah you know caller joe hackett here Joe Hackett. <laughs> we know this joe. caller how are we doing today on this rainy I'm, windy I'm saturday listen uh, i just got done eating my oatmeal with uh <laughs> Raisins in it, and listening to you guys, and that guy sitting with you is a Renaissance man. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> which one? <We> got <laughs> uh, yeah, which one? Yeah, <laughs> yourself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, listen, I like the Hausberger, uh, John. The, Joe is a great customer of the Blue Dog and his wife, and they come in often and. Uh, yeah. Joe, we have house burgers available today if you want to come by. <laughs> <laughs> they had a good place of their own back in the day. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Uh, listen, uh, John, John's been a good guy out at uh, Lincoln College, too, folks. Uh, oh, absolutely. He, he uh, was the president there and, and brought them through some uh, kind of strange and unusual times and, you know, with, some, uh, yeah. <laughs> with his expertise. That's great. And uh, thank you. I Joe. do appreciate him, and because I'm a graduate, so 
So anyway, you, you uh, I'm, you I'm hot for. Uh, I'm, I'm just really excited about Notre Dame women. Man, oh man. <laughs> yeah, did you watch that last night? That was pretty exciting, wasn't it? Both games were nuts. I about fell out of my chair three or four times. First of all, you, you're crazy because you turned on women's basketball, but then, but then you get tied up into it. You know? Yeah, I know. It, it's, it's good basketball. Both, yeah, great coaches, uh, yeah. all four teams, and uh, and some fantastic players. And then the ending, I'm going, oh my goodness gracious! Yeah. Yeah, well, listen, true. I don't want to bother you guys anymore. And uh, thanks, John, for being on that just, you know, brings a little bit of uh, kind of credence to the program. <laughs> oh. hey, and, and thanks for the compliments, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Joe. <laughs> yeah, see you. you are now on the block see caller you. list. <laughs> <laughs> that block caller up yeah, there. Do not answer that phone again. <laughs> hey, if, uh, let's change subjects if we aren't going to a commercial. And. Talk about uh, Cardinal baseball. Why? <laughs> well, why would we do that? <laughs> <laughs> because it's three on one. Um, well, this is that's not on my agenda. Okay. Uh, real quick, before I forget, I, I want to throw this out because it's a great story. Uh, you follow uh, hockey at all, Blackhawks? A little bit, yeah. Uh, Scott Foster, a 36-year-old accountant, plays in the beer league uh, in a stadium just a few blocks from. Uh, United uh, Center. United Center. Uh, he's one of three emergency goalies. Yeah, and that's fun, yeah. he goes to about 13 games a, a year. Uh, he gets a box. He's in a box, you know, and nachos, hot dogs, whatever he wants. Well, it just so happened the stars aligned in the game. I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. Uh, Corey Crawford's out with an injury. So his backup was warming up before doing – Kicking around a soccer ball. I don't know how you get injured doing that, but he did. You ever do it on ice? <laughs> <laughs> what, was it on I'm ice? Sure. No, I just. I don't if know. we brought a soccer ball, I'm pretty sure you could hurt yourself. But I'm not an ahead. athlete. <laughs> 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 and we proved that a few weeks ago. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so he's now, he is the backup goalie. So he's getting suited up. And as this is going on, his team, his beer league team, is playing down the road at the local hockey rink and they see this he's suiting up it's it, you know the odds of this happening are very slim so he's the backup goalie well the goalie the backup backup goalie was in he gets hurt late in the game right and scott foster gets his cue a beer league goalie is now playing for the blackhawks and he had like seven or eight saves. I think seven, seven saves. saves seven, yeah. yeah. How cool and, uh, that? And, yeah. and the crowd was cheering. And, I mean, it was oh my, uh, that's awesome. And, and this ice rink down the road, they have TVs and all this. Well, they they stop the face off to watch all this, and you know, it's a pretty cool story. That's very cool. And uh, just you, you don't think about that stuff. You got a 36 year old accountant that's drinking it. beers, playing hockey down the road, and. You know. yeah, he said earlier in the day he was at his desk working on working, uh, working on some bookwork yeah. and stuff. What and and, and that night wow. he's uh, he's in the net at <laughs> the madhouse. I'm a fan. How Let's awesome get a jersey. So. What a memory is that? Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty cool. So I bet we can and get him on the show. And guys, I tell you what, dreams it, do come true, so don't give up, Joe. <laughs> and I tell you what, regardless if you're a hockey fan or not, if you're watching that and you saw how every save that crowd went, yeah, crazy. Sure, yeah. it was unbelievable. I mean, it gave me goosebumps. It was yeah. pretty awesome. That's very cool. Yeah, I'm glad he did so well. well. Yeah, oh yeah, it, I yeah. Mean, it, was, it yeah. wasn't a long time, but it, you know, seven saves now. That's he good. probably will never get to do that again, but for seven, eight minutes. We're getting him on the show. I tell you what, you might not want to do it again. I mean, you're, yeah. out, you're going you're out on a perfect record yeah. right now. I mean, you, you, you don't know. want to be the backup backup because yeah. you may be flipping spots. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> but, yeah, that's just that's, that's amazing, and that's, that's a fun story. And, yeah, it is. You know, it's just. And I tell you what, in hockey, if, if you miss a few of them goals, they go past you. Yeah, I can't. Boy, it's, it's crazy how fast you become the GOAT. <laughs> there, there's there's, there's, there's going to be somebody out there. There's going to be a movie made. I mean, there's it's going to be something. Oh, you were saying. You know, because that's just one of those, you know. It's it's like a feel-good story. Yeah, that baseball yeah. movie a few years ago where the guy comes back and 
his uh to start throwing like 98 mile an hour and oh, never was, thrown over 89. That was like 20 years ago yeah. with Dennis Quaid. Yeah. yeah. It has <laughs> yeah. been a few. Walk out of that it's field. been a long time. But yeah, yeah. you're right. I mean, you know, he's, the same a, thing, yeah. he's a high school coach and he goes and does a tryout and he has surgery or something and yep. it makes his arm stronger. And yeah, that's pretty cool. So uh, that's pretty. That's yeah, a 30 neat 30 story on ESPN. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah there, it will be. You know, yeah. 36 year old accountant from Southside Chicago, Scott Foster. And to be that flexible, 36. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it hurts well, me to think planned. about it. Because <laughs> you sell couches for a living. That's uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Or my employees do, I should say. <laughs> so back to Cub baseball. Yeah, or Cub was it baseball. Cardinal baseball. No, it was Cubs. Did the Cubs <laughs> win last night? No, I tell you what, man, that was a long game. That, that was, was a long, long game. Seventeen innings. Cardinals picked up a Holland this week. Yeah, well, what? I, that, that's interesting. That's interesting. I don't understand why he went so late. It was just people. It's just kind of a, a, a have to have because you got some guys on the DL. Well, I, I'm thinking for in his mindset, he wants to be on a team that's going to be competitive, where he's going to get quite a few chances, one. where he's going to get quite a few chances to either get some saves or be in a late inning situation, and up yeah. his stock for next year because next year is going to be a spending spree. Right. Uh, unlike this year, I think all the teams were pulling oh. their money back, waiting for next year to see what happens. I, I think he's going to be right out there on the market again. Either that, or if he's having a de- solid year, I think the Cardinals might go ahead and throw some money his way and s- sign him into a long term. You know, they're talking maybe a little collusion going on in the yeah. MLB. You think Russians were involved? The yeah. Russians <laughs> could have been involved. There could have been, could have been a little bit. Is, Scott, is Scott Boris part Russian? What's that? Part Putin? <laughs> One lady's name? She involved? <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't remember her name now. I, Stormy. I, I, Stormy, Stormy involved. Stormy Daniels involved in this one. Uh, oh, be. we can say Stormy on there. Yeah, yeah. That's all that. it's Stormy out. It's gonna storm a day. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, actually, I tell you, like I said, I think a lot of teams will pull their money back. Next year's crop of free agency yeah. is, is unbelievable, and and they're not signing. They all want the biggest payday oh. possible, and I think there's going to be possibly two, maybe three $300 million contracts. Yeah, and, you know, during winter meetings is when a lot of this takes place. I don't see anything happening, you know, winter meetings. This no, year. no. It was slow this past year. Next year, everybody's lining up. Well, they're, they're then again, I don't know. You have, you have Bryce, when you got the biggest fish he's in, got, in the sea. He's going to dictate the market. I think he'll. I think he'll go quick. I think uh, the Giants or one of these other teams are going to come out and they're going to say three fifty, boom, and he's going to be signing three fifty for ten. Yeah, I would do that in a heartbeat. I, th- I think that's what's going to happen. You think he'll go higher than Stanton did? Then yeah, I wow. do. I do. I, I, I think he's a better player and he's younger. Well, he's well actually, younger. actually, he'll be the same age as Stanton was. I guess yeah. when he signed one. Probably, yeah. Probably. How old is he? He's so. twenty. Five right now. Five twenty six. Yeah. That that would be that would be the perfect contract. Three fifty. Ten years. I the, mean, the, the only problem is contract. at some point if you're if he signed that contract, you're probably going to have to hope the team ha- can move him to an infield position or have a DH available. Is that is that contract going to be front loaded? I don't, I don't think it matters. You're still paying it. It's just like the pools contract. You're still paying it, and you better have a guy that can. But if it's front the loaded, thing is in this ster- non steroid era we're playing in these guys after they get past 32 33 the decline actually does set in Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you see the knees and the ankles and the foot injuries and you're seeing a lot more of that they're not able to pump that stuff in and get get that bottom half of their body healthy again well i mean uh, what are you saying used to do that like the entire league or do you want me to name (laughs) the players that weren't doing it <laughs> well, I think he'd look good in right field in St. Louis, personally. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to agree with with a zoom on so. the other side. Uh, yeah. Oh, that, that, that'd be pretty. Keep dreaming, fellas, because he's going to be in Cubby Blue. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think the Cubbies are going to be able to sign their players. <laughs> like, yeah. You still got a contract with Hayward you can't hardly afford. I wouldn't be putting <laughs> another one in place. <laughs> And maybe yeah. after this after this year they might be complaining about that Lester contract as well. Uh, yeah, he's yeah, he didn't look. Cubs good. are gonna fold up this year. Whatever. Look at you smiling. Ten <laughs> sale. Ten <laughs> sale. <laughs> <laughs> Going out for They'll business. be lining up at Jake's. We'll put them under the tent. That's funny. Everybody will be giving, Inventory giving reduction tickets sale. away by July fourth. Going out for business sale. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's, it's that's what's gonna go on. The, uh J B you go a lot of ball games. Yeah. How uh, compare that Wrigley to St. Louis. Boy, it's nice over in St. Louis, isn't it? 
Well, the, the, it is a beautiful ballpark, but I you're not going to walk me into that one. Wrigley's got a lot of nostalgia and history, and I, I enjoy oh, it as well. So. Is that big jumbotron, does that yeah. throw you back into that old school no, feel that doesn't, thing? but you know... Uh, <laughs> I they are doing nice Those things. Those bathrooms do. When <laughs> I see it from the outside. Bathrooms <laughs> 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 do. Yeah. I tell you what, they have done a lot of nice improvements yeah. over the and stadium. You, I mean, it, you have to you these know. days. I mean, I love Wrigley Field. Rig, yeah. I well, guess they're, the visitors' they're, they're locker room still up the land Did Wrigley they not Field. change anything in it? They're, they're soaking up the land around Wrigley Field, and they're making that full baseball experience like St. Louis yeah, has absolutely. done and, uh, and a few other ballparks around the major leagues. It's really, if you're a fan of major league baseball and you're going to a lot of these teams now, it's an experience all day experience yeah. now it's not just a bowl game driving to wrigley is of course more challenging yeah. than get, that's getting to bush parking. but that's parking that, yeah. i guess they're building a, a ramp a, a right. hotel and a garage yeah right yeah. there next to it aren't they cost you, uh, really yeah it cost you 150 bucks to park. <laughs> oh no it, that's going to be for uh season ticket holders I'll, yeah. I'll guarantee it that'll sure. be part of the season ticket holder package yeah, yeah. and it should be yeah it's a pair to get in and out of the best way to do it guys take a train up Cab it, cab it over. Now, if we're as we roll out of here, let's bring the blue dog back in. You got anything you want to throw out there today? Today's specials. What's what should we look I forward you, to? I tell you that spinach salad you have. Yes. Throw some chicken on top. That is a meal. That is a man-sized <laughs> meal right there. Holy! Joe's cow. laughing. You just I'm, said salad. Hey, I'm. <laughs> I'm telling you, and, and John, John knows what I'm talking about. That is a man-sized meal. Hey, he, oh, yeah. he brought his wife, and she ordered for eggs. both of them. <laughs> oh, you know you that. Got bacon and Sparkly eggs. Sparkly things on his so jeans. Good. Yeah, did she cut it up for you too? Oh my goodness. Well, Jake, we, we can do that you. for you anytime you want it. But yeah. uh, it is steak Saturday at the at the Blue Dog. Oh. Ooh, and steak Saturday is uh, the the steak and shake burgers are a dollar off, and the uh, ribeye steak dinners are two dollars off. There you go. So every Saturday. Man, Not going wrong there. there. My mouth's watering right now for a good old ribeye. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I'll tell you what, wrong fire that. that grill up. John likes nothing more than to see some three fat guys walk in and grab a table. Too, <laughs> <don't you? laughs> I'm not touching that. <laughs> He'll even come over and say hello. <laughs> and the blue moons are ice cold. Well, yes, yeah. They're not getting a salad. <laughs> well, I tell you what, guys, that, that hour went quick. It, it's amazing when you have intelligent conversation how uh, thank you. smooth things go. It's, it's amazing when you get somebody like John on here. He can really drive the show to be <laughs> yeah, a little to be next level. great again. Well, <laughs> I mean, you know, if he got an itinerary, things are going to go well. <laughs> right? John, you were in the professional world for a long time. Didn't you most time have an itinerary about what was going to go I wouldn't on? attend a meeting without an agenda. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. These guys want an itinerary. might need one of our commercials. Yeah. These guys want these guys want agendas and itineraries, but they don't want to contribute. So, oh, you know? that's, oh, here that's we go. A Jim, start the music. <laughs> Cue it up. It's hard on a show to have a leader like Scott. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Thank and, you guys for And I do in. a great job. Just ask me. Thanks yeah. for having us, John. Yeah, John, thanks, thanks for having us. Man, Blue Dog. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having us up here. Bet. We'll open at 11. Open at 11. Close at? 10. 10. 10. On, well, the kitchen closes at Depends 10. Depends how much you drink. You yeah. just keep on. Yeah. You can hang around. <laughs> you can hang around. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's going to do it for us today. Uh, big games tonight, guys. Loyal University, Michigan. Kansas and Villanova for the final four. They advance to the championship on Monday. So good luck to them. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Matt Gordon, a.k.a. Flash, calling in today. Man, it's got to be exciting down in San Antonio right now. Our sponsors. And next week, Joe or Jake. Joe or Jake. Joe or Jake. We'll flip a we'll coin. Figure it out. Who wants to get out of bed earlier, guys? Jake or Joe? That's the winner. It'll be me. Okay. He won't get up early. It's going to be Joe's. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, and we will talk to you next week. Good day.